But yeah, let's go to the next question because uh, yeah. Well, you oh, mentioned yeah, there you are. You mentioned yeah. valence batteries. Yeah, yeah. What, can you tell us about that? They're great, but <laughs> the discharge rate is very low. So I have some 40 amp hour ones, and I think the max I could pull from each one is 35 amps. That's because for its specified application it works, but that's very limited. So you need to put a lot of them together. And now the price has increased where you are better off getting a battle born because you have to calculate the usable capacity and it's a used battery. And we got like, what were the test results? You guys remember it was like 85 to 90% or something like that. So uh, yeah, um, <laughs> that's another thing is with uh, lead acid, you can use only like 50% of it usually. And if you, in some guys, some guys will say, I've been using them for 30 years and it works great and you can get way more and you can deeply discharge them. And they are right, but if you look at the data sheet, it will degrade and you'll only get like 200 to 300 cycles. So yeah, you can, but you don't want to. So yeah, always verify what you see online with actual data sheets or battery studies because there's so many opinions. People will talk your ear off with their opinions. Be like, well, it worked for me. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> it just does not work that way with the electricity. It, electricity doesn't care about your feelings. Electrochemical batteries do not care about your feelings. They, they are dangerous and you need to do it right. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Will. How's it Hi. going? Love your videos. I've been watching you since uh, you had a Toyota Dolphin. No way. I have a Toyota Dolphin. Oh, my God. That's crazy. <laughs> you Swiss cheese that roof. But that's anyway. That's so funny. Um, okay. So I got a Life Blue lithium iron phosphate. It's awesome. It has built yeah. in. Um, you can use with the app and it has all these, you know, um, overcharge, undercharge built in. You, you know, it's really awesome. So now I'm ready to get solar. I have zero solar up there, but I've been using a portable. So my question is mixing um, your portable for when you're parked in the shade, you've got you know solar on the roof. Like what kind of charge controller do you recommend where you can, and would you recommend wiring it before the charge controller or doing separate charge controllers? Right, right. Because those portables have their own little cheap charge controller. Right. So. Is there, a, is there such a thing where you can mix uh, and then, you know what I mean? You want to have separate usually. Okay. Typically. You can use, um, what I did for years actually was, because um, I couldn't afford anything, um, I, I would just use the cheapest $15 controller and I'd have like three of them and then I have like one expensive MPPT. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's junky. Spaghetti. I Spaghetti. took those videos down because the, the older electrical engineer guys were like, that's not how you do it. You're doing it so wrong. Yeah. And they would get but so it was mad. Great. It I was, was like, really entertaining to me because I was an electrician in the film industry. Oh, and we nice. call it spaghetti. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, yeah, okay, was... add as you go. But, yeah. but now, like, is there a charge controller that adds, allows you to do that with separate inputs? There's no such thing. Because it seems like everyone gangs them before they go into the charge controller. But you're saying oh, you're keep talking about multiple stay arrays separate, with stay like stay separate because the portable is not going to be used all the time. Right. I just want to plug the portable in when I use it. Just use you can you can hook up like ten or twenty solar charge controllers to one battery. And I can, can, w should I just keep on using alligator clips with my portable? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's good as long right. as there's nothing like on top. Or in, in that one, which portable are you using? Is it the Renegy it's one? It's a Dokio. Does it have a fuse what? on it? Yep. Yeah, just, just connect it. Leave it all day. You're good. Yeah. Okay. And you could connect like three of them to it. You could connect four. You could have a MPPT and um, a shore power and a PWM. You could you could add all of them to a single battery. The only issue, but the life blue, the life blue one, right? Yeah. You have the lithium iron phosphate one. There's no power. room in the compartment for any any more wires, too. You so. know what I did to be... Toyotas <laughs> are so freaking lazy. small. <laughs> yeah. So when I had my first RVs, and they were really broken down and water damaged, um, I got them for free, the first one for free. One of my mom's friends was going to jail, so we, we got a free <laughs> RV. And so... Um, <laughs> and it actually, it cost a lot to get that thing down here from L.A. And then... Uh, and I was actually living in the van, and I was still living in my van because I liked the bed. But then um, the RV had so much space. I felt like I was in Fight Club with the house on Water Street. It was, like, falling apart. The roof was leaking everywhere. And, I mean, you don't want to put electrical stuff in there anyways because it could just, who knows what. 
But what I did with that is the receptacles for the light, if the wire gauge is thick, and most RVs that are built up, it's like 10 or 12 gauge. And if you have a tiny solar panel, you can actually connect it straight to a light output. So I don't suggest that. That's not to spec. I'm not going to mention that on my channels. But if you have some little receptacle somewhere and it's connected to that battery, you could connect it outside. I love doing that. I love running the wires outside. Um, but for yeah, you, you could just connect as many as you want to it. Is that answering your question? I'm not sure if I yeah, hit that. Yeah, it totally right. is because okay. I, well, I just wasn't sure if it was safe to, or I mean, smart to mix. But when I have the portable out, I'm usually in the shade and I'm babysitting it. So it's not like... Oh yeah, you're fine. You don't have to worry about I've cooked, that. I've cooked alligator clips before because what I did is I unplugged it. I had a really small panel and yeah, it's like, I just want to share it with people because it's stupid. You know, you, don't, you never think it's going to happen to you. And I unplugged the um, solar and left the alligator clips on the battery and put them in. Well, one came off, the black came off, and touched some metal. So I came back, the next time I opened the compartment, all the wiring uh, insulation had fried. It, you, you won't have that with like a switching regulator, portable solar, the trickle charge. Well, I shouldn't it won't have driven happen. with those alligator clips on too. Oh, right, yeah, you don't want to do that. I, yeah. I blew it. In. Yeah. But, but it was dangerous, you know, and it's a so 20, those, those charge 20 control. old vehicle, you know, with wood paneling, yeah. they just go up like matchsticks. Yeah. So with those charge controllers, though, they need a reference voltage and they need to be connected to a battery before they start charging. And for those ones, actually, like a lot of the portables are pretty safe. You don't have to worry about much in a hundred watt panel, but um, and it's fused. I wouldn't even think about it. And uh, that's even being on the extremely safe side. Yeah, you don't. It's it's all good. Just it connected. works great though. It's Dokio. It puts <laughs> out fourteen in bright sun. Yeah, it's, that's the fourteen good. is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Right on. All right, two-part question. Okay. 12-volt versus 24-volt systems. Which one's better? Explain them. 48-volt system's better. <laughs> <laughs> Missed it. <laughs> know about that one. Oh, 48 volts are the... Oh. So once you actually make a 48-volt system, you never go back. Uh, the wires are like one-fourth the size. Um, it's just so much better in every way. The problem, though, with RVs and vans is you have that 12-volt alternator, 12-volt stuff from Walmart, 12-volt everything, right? So practicality-wise, a lot of people stick to 12 volts. Um, that's why all the system packages for, like, my blueprints are 12-volt. And then I have advanced section for 24 and 48-volt systems. But, yeah, if you can do it, 48-volt system is always better. If you take those inverters, they do not heat up nearly as much. The amount of loss, it's its just always better. I have a 30-minute video that covers every point, though, and I calculate wire runs, efficiency losses, total system design, and, yeah, I, it would take, like, the whole time of this talk for me to explain every point. But the higher voltage is better, but most people can't use it. If you have a small system under, like, 1,500-watt inverter, 12 volts is fine, though, because you're not doing much. Like, when you're trying to actually push, you know, a lot of power, it is, yes, but <laughs> there's a lot to say. Depends on how much money you have. So, like, wire is not cheap, all right? <laughs> and in system components, yeah, there's a lot to say. Check out that video, though. I talked for, like, 30 minutes straight about <laughs> every... Okay, cool. But, yeah, go for higher voltage. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Do you know about CTEC charge controllers? And tell me. Yeah. About Wh that, which you know? one? Oh God. That's oh no. Good, okay. I don't know. They have a few different kinds. So there's a CTEC that a lot of people want. Well, do you mean PWM or MPPT or what size? No. MP. Oh, MPPT. Yeah. Okay. Um. I haven't actually like load tested them, so I don't know, but. Uh, yeah, I can't speak on any specific models. I know I could talk to you about a specific like type, but um, I haven't tested those. Okay. Yeah, I'm a little ignorant. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I got a question for you. I've got uh, two converters, and I want to put them together. Ooh, good question. Yes. Well, what kind I, of converters? I'm already running 720 watts on my nice. SUV. 
What, what's the converter doing? Is it step down or a boost? It's just uh, extra. I got a 5,000 watt inverter that I'm running. Oh wait, what, so what's the converter for? You have a 24 volt system and you're stepping down? Or yeah, what's the converter I, for? Well, the converter Oh, converter is, for charging for sure. Right. Okay, got it. And I want to put two of them together. Yeah, you're good. So, don't mix <laughs> the AC. You have to have two separate AC cords going out to the receptacles. Um, the converter, what amp rating is it? They're only 1200 and that's why I want to put two of them together. Can your bat battery handle it? Well, I got 800 or 680 amp hours. Are you hours. talking about what, what kind of converter? I don't think we're talking about the same kind of stuff here. Um, wh what, um, inverter, I'm sorry. Oh, inverter. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Inverter is for house. Oh, boy. I'm yeah, sorry. I was yeah. like, we're going to talk about noise that. and system yeah, and I, get all nerdy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Inverters, yeah, just connect it. Yeah, you're fine. You don't have to cut the diode or anything like that, right? And to make you're talking about paralleling them, right? Right, exactly. But you, are you talking about the output? Paralleling the output AC phase? Not the AC. Single phase? Okay. DC coming in. Oh, yeah, you just connect them together. Yeah. Okay, like parallel them together. Yeah. Like battery, battery. battery bank. You can connect 100 inverters to one battery. You can connect five solar charge controllers to one battery. Um, the determining limit will be the wires that you connect, right. the you battery gotta discharge the rate. Yeah, you got to have the right wires. Yeah, and yeah. the fusing size and stuff. But, yeah, it's, it's no problem. There won't be a single issue with that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. My question's just about the same as his. If I get the Battleborn or any lithium battery, put it in the coach, do I need to switch out my inverter? Wait, say that again? If I get a batter, uh, yeah. lithium, go from lead acid to lithium, oh, okay. slap Switching it in there, do I need to switch out my inverter in the coach? I think you're talking about converter box. Is yeah, that it? The yeah. one that comes it's, with the yeah. coach? Yeah. The one with all the fuses that runs the AC outlets. H how the, old is your It's unit? 2017. Oh, um, no, those are smart charge. Yeah, you'll be fine. You just connect it. So just be lithium, and then it might, won't fry my refrigerator. Or no, as long as it's 12 volt and 12 volt battery, just throw it in there. You're good. It will charge it right up. And uh, they're made to work with anything that can use like lead acid so you're, you're okay uh -huh. um if it's an older one a lot of people with older rvs here you might have a converter box that uh, uh there's quite a few different ones <laughs> whoops sorry um yeah if it's old and it's not a smart charger with uh, multi-stage charging um, and it has equalization and you connect it. But even if it did, it would be fine because those have protection benefits. It's so funny. People like are so scared of lithium, but it is so much easier to charge than lead acid. Lead acid, preferably you want like four or five stage charging and like at different intervals you want to have equalization. Lithium, you just charge it. You just give it a higher voltage and it charges. And if the voltage is too high, it'll disconnect. So it's really easy. You, you're actually, just slap it in there, yeah. Unless you have something really weird or old, or, uh, but even if you do, it'll still work. Yeah. Yeah, should be good. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's all solar panels now. <laughs> Little micro farm, solar farm. Thanks for coming, Will. Oh, thank you. Um, so with all the batteries being dangerous, yeah. Um, I, now <laughs> you've got me worried. I've got two Battleborns under my bed, under my pillow. <laughs> yeah. Is there, should I be putting them in a metal box? Should no, you don't need anything. So the biggest problem with those is that you got to make sure it doesn't move around, right? They need to be strapped down. Um, something I've seen, and I've seen this in person, and it... It's not the battery in your situation that's dangerous because that one, the safety features and the chemistry, you don't have to worry about that combusting or something. It will not happen at all. What you have to worry about is if you stop your rig and your battery gets yanked forward or moves and there's a wire connected and it gets yanked out and then you have like a live wire just everywhere, that's what you have to worry about. It's just all the stuff around the battery. <laughs> But for that, that's the cool thing about Battleborns. You don't have to really worry about too much. And Life Blue and all the other, you know, anything that has, like, a safety system, there's not a whole lot you have to worry about. Unless you have improper gauge wire, 
you're not using copper, all the other stuff that I mentioned earlier. But yeah, you're not. I would sleep on top of them too. It's all good. I sleep on top of batteries every day. I have them all underneath my bed. No, I'm just kidding. I don't. I'm joking. But yeah. <laughs> okay. So you liked Kodiak, then you don't like it. Nope. Yeah. I know. And there's even a video <laughs> guy uh, explaining with support of company how wrong you are and ridiculous. But it doesn't matter. But now, yeah. my problem is I don't want all those wires and fr switches and fuses and batteries and inverter and charger and then switch and connect to my existing stuff. So I'm thinking about one of those Kodiak-like boxes, like that new one coming out or whatever. So why, would I, why shouldn't I do that? Why shouldn't you do that? Yeah, okay. because buying yeah. two Battleborn, I, I went to Reno, so is you there even a got reason a shirt. why? Dang, I don't even have a shirt. I had a shirt, and they sent me the wrong size. That's why I don't wear them. <laughs> I don't like wearing any sponsor gear, though. It's so silly. Like those YouTubers, they're like, hey, guys, click on the link below. Check out my new shirt. We got this uh, new sponsor. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. But yeah, back to the question, Kodiak. Yeah, but basically, um, <laughs> it's not Kodiak, but any of them. They have limitation of charging. Like, right. Like everybody likes Jackery, like some people here on my left. Uh, but it takes 18 hours to charge it. <laughs> yeah. For a small like that it's one. It's pathetic. So, so, you know, so it has limitations. But is there any other reason what I shouldn't like or why I shouldn't go that way? Um, hmm. Because they're all junky and they're not UL listed and they can uh, fail and everything on them fails. <laughs> like pretty much every reason on the world. But uh, why would you, but it's convenient right so the jackery i like because it works and if someone gets it i don't have to worry about fires or it just it works it's um how do you charge it with solar and it's slow i know seriously even the largest jackery is good for a cell phone and maybe a laptop and it will power it the output's great but uh yeah it takes forever to recharge it drives me nuts Okay. But I do know that in the future, even though I'm biased to my little projects and building it myself, we will have boxes soon that do everything. And I can't actually tell you guys anything right now because I'm, I'm just emailing the manufacturers, but they have really cool stuff coming out. I personally would still go for a modular system because if everything goes to crap, you can always fix and mess with it, right? If you get a box system, you can mess with them and fix them too, but it's a lot harder. I mean, you've got a battery next to an inverter. That is, that is stupid. Like, you don't want that, right? Like, long term, it's illogical. Just the cooling, and, and it has to do with heat. All these batteries and degradation over time, you want it to be nice and cold. So... We will have really cool boxes coming out. Uh, we don't have any right now. Um, yeah, and they're also too expensive, in my opinion, for what you get. And they're all using cheap batteries, by the way. I haven't looked at this side of the crowd because I keep like looking over there. So um, everyone's using like the same lithium-ion cells that you have in a laptop battery because it's cheap, right? They just throw it in there. And it drives me nuts because if you actually had a lithium iron phosphate system and you had like a decent, like high quality inverter, it would last for like 10 years and you wouldn't have to think about it. But these companies are cheap as heck. So I don't know. There's no options right now. Um, you have to build your own or deal with all the shortcomings. That's all I can say. I've tested almost all of them. And if I had, and I don't even make videos on them, they send them out to me, the prototypes and they're just trash, man. If you open them up, they're all junky. So, yeah, ne next question. Should be good. Okay. Well, since the line is not that big, I figured I'd ask another question. Oh, sure. What I got is my system right now is not Battleborn. I want to get a Battleborn system. Now, what would I have to change over? Will Good I have question. to? Yeah. Will I have to change over my controller? Will I have to control uh, change my inverter to run a Battleborn Lithium? Battleborn, no. 
you can use all standard equipment and it's made I do to have work. an MPPT, yeah. of course. You don't have to change anything. Okay, great. They specifically, and I've tested it with over voltage situation, you don't have to worry. Even the disc, I actually <laughs> messed up yesterday and <laughs> gave it over voltage. I gave it 30 <laughs> volts. I was such an idiot, but uh, yeah, you don't have to worry. Okay, great. I was just wondering if I got to buy some more stuff. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Will. Yeah, with those. Do not, do not. That's a great topic yeah, that we need to mention that. right now, yeah. I think. So a lot of these rigs, right, you get a solenoid or a relay, and it's a big, fat, you know, cylinder. You stick it next to the battery, and you run wires to the alternator. And then when you turn your engine on, it charges your solar battery, right? Um, those are not smart to use with lithium systems. Ever, ever. Do not use them. It's completely illogical. You need to have even, and it's, and people say, oh, I have lead acid batteries and my dad's been doing that for 20 years with our rig and it's fine. That does not matter. Um, those batteries are going to die very quickly. So whether you use lead acid or lithium, um, you want to have a dedicated what's called DC to DC battery charger. It goes between your charging system and your solar battery. And it modulates the power. And because if you were to connect a big lithium battery bank, directly to the charging system of your car with the flooded battery, it will try to dump as much as it can. And the resistance of that lithium battery is so low that it will push so much current that it will damage your alternator. And it will smoke up. There's videos online by Victron. They just made a, a bench test to show people because they wouldn't. So they put an alternator on their bench and then ran it to a lithium battery and then it burned out. Um, the marine crowd has known this for like years and years and years because they have these huge heavy duty ones and they will still burn those out. Um, if you want to directly charge a lithium battery bank, you could do two alternators and have one that's externally regulated and have a wire running. And then when it's externally regulated, what that means is there's a circuit that figures out the temperature of the battery, the voltage of the battery, um, to some degree other metrics um, and some of them have what's called uh, it will sample the voltage of both batteries with its own leads and then it will charge it perfectly right if you do not have that and you go on Amazon and you buy a $20 kit and you just run it on your van your batteries are going to die in a couple years I mean how many people here have had a bad battery that you're like like raise your hand if you've had a battery that you had to swap out because it shorted a cell at 2 o'clock in the morning I mean, I've swapped out so many batteries because it's just, they fail so often. So, um, yeah, do not use those cheap little, even if it says voltage sensitive relay, VSR, do not use those either. They're cheap on Amazon and a lot of van and RV dwellers are using them. It's completely illogical. You need either externally regulated or a DC to DC battery charger. I actually have a few videos on those and all of the specifics if you want to learn how to wire it up. The problem with those is they're like 400 to $500 if you want the Sterling or like, yeah, th those, they're nice. They're expensive. Do you have $500 to replace the $20 relay? Most people would not want to do that. <laughs> $500, $20, which one are you going to choose? I personally, with all my rigs, I disconnect the alternator because there is no point in stressing that system. That alternator is designed for your vehicle, and that's it. Those engineers are smarter than everybody here in there. They know what they're doing. Just leave it to be and charge your solar battery with solar. Done. Separate it. What I do like to do, though, is keep jumper cables so in case I need to get a jump off the solar battery, which I've done a lot. <laughs> I have, oh my god, yeah. Again, 2 o'clock in the morning, you're driving down the desert. <laughs> Think about that moment. Do you want to deal with it? No. <laughs> yeah, next question. Thanks. Um, let's see. I have a, a system with two lithium batteries. Um, Which ones, actually? You know, I can't remember. They're green. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll let you know, though. Okay. I got them. They have a re replaceable BMS, and I bought them at the RV store, I mean, RV show in Quartzsite last year. They're right across from the Battleborns. It's a replaceable BMS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, so you ship that to the company <laughs> if it fails. But now I think I heard you say that I, if one fails, then I could still use the whole system. But I'm not going to have any failures. It's been a year. XP on 360. XP on 360. XP on 360. I don't know what that is. They're created by the people who founded Zam Solar. 
Yes, yes, that's oh, them. Oh, Zamp. Oh, Zamp, he says. I've not tested Zamp. I'm going to be testing them this year, by the way. But Oh. Okay. Yep. Green light. That's all I need. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Because I can't. I, I Wait, what's the question on that? Oh, so, so that's, okay. uh, I have a separate system. It's, I used to live in the Dolphin and the Sun Raiders for 30 years. I've been on Ooh. the road. I had a leak, and I had someone else check it for me. No, you yeah. check it yourself, because they said, it's fine. I said, yeah. ah, something's wrong. Then I checked it, and I needed to fill it. But I've had two of those, and they're wonderful. Nice, good, good. Yeah, but so now I'm in a Ford Transit um, for whatever reason. But have separate system without ch connecting to the um, um, alternator. Mm -hmm. I had my um, system. I bought the system at Solar Penny in Phoenix. Thumbs up for them. I, I you know, they, he did, he sold me a lovely system there with a 24 volt panel on the roof. But I think that um, I've always reminded that you're not supposed to charge the lithium batteries under 32 degrees. Yeah. And maybe you could speak about that a little bit because that's been my concern. But my MPPT has a thermometer so i which, know which what, one is it oh it's another green one <laughs> gosh i don't know this i don't know those things so if you have a victron battery sensor you can program a disconnect i'm not getting every paid, bms so yeah, yeah yeah every bms is different though yeah very 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 different i've a lot of what i've been talking to companies about is um how different their bms is and you would think that some of them that cost a lot are better, but not always is the case. You just have to look up the manual and see if there's a low temperature disconnect. And what you could also do is put it in oh. a freezer and then check the voltage and just be like, okay, there we go. Well, but it has <laughs> my, yeah, my MPPT has the temperature, it tells uh, me. Um, that, that won't tell you, it won't, all MPPTs have temperature for what's called temperature coefficient compensation. And it has to do with, pushing what voltage at what temperature for lead acid. So you can use it for lithium iron phosphate, but that temperature sensor has nothing to do with lithium. It will not help you. It will not change anything. It will do nothing. Um, um, really boring conversation to talk about why. But uh, um, yeah, that you need to check the manual of that battery and if it has low temp disconnect. So just so you guys know, if you take any lithium ion chemistry electrolyte battery, and it's frozen or you know below 30 degrees, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, and you try charging it, it will be permanently damaged. Like the, the chemical, it, the composition changes and it will be permanently damaged. Just let's say that your battery is ruined. If you spend $5,000 on batteries and you charge it when it's frozen and it does not have that protection feature, you just lost $5,000 instantly. And people have done that. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ruxu. It's a Chinese-based um, lithium iron phosphate battery manufacturer. They typically just distribute xenopoly cells, but it's funny because the battery doesn't have low temp disconnect like Battleborn. So guess what? You spend all that money, one winter night, it's all done. I would imagine here in the United States, if you're at a road show and considering where you were at, it probably does have it. I would check, though. Um, yeah, no, it's true, though. The moment, and it's funny because some of the cheaper ones will be like, oh, we have low temperature disconnect. But it might be like one temperature sensor on one side of the battery. And guess what? Battleborn has it all over it. So if it's cold on this side but not cold over here, it still stops charging. So, um, yeah, if you have a, like a big system and you have like, you know, a ten or $20,000 battery bank with lithium batteries, you're going to have multiple ten temperature sensors inside and outside and around, and you're going to program all the parameters. But for those, typically, like most van and RV toilers don't have to worry about that. You just buy it and stick it in there. So right. And it's under my bed, too. So if it's frozen, I am, and I don't go there. So. Yeah. No, it's best to have it in living situations for lithium iron phosphate. I would not say that for Tesla batteries. Like, you know how everybody's using the battery modules in their rigs nowadays? Because you just stack them up. It's 24 volts. Um, we've actually been thinking about the charge and discharge curves on those, and it's funny because everyone's like, oh, wow, what a slam and deal. I get 5.2 kilowatt hours, but guess what? It's at a lower nominal voltage, so you can't use half of the battery. So when people, it's so funny. I always he hear people bragging. They're like, 
I've got this many amp hours of battery, but if you do the math and you look at, you know, state of charge and what they're using it for, a lot of people do not have the capacity that they think. That's why everybody, I think, should have a capacity monitor shunt. It's just 30 bucks. It tells you what your battery is at. Whether you have 100 amp hours or 500 amp hours, it'll tell you exactly how much is available. Mm. And then also, um, yeah, I would just contact the manufacturer and it'll be good. I kind of used your question to like tangent like crazy across the, you know, lithium iron phosphate um, freezing charging. But what's cool that most people don't know about is if you go negative 20 degrees Celsius, believe it is, you can discharge safely. You can't charge, but you can discharge. So what I like to do is I'll have a separate circuit with the BMS and I'll have a heat pad connected and then I'll ch change the temperature to like negative 10 for discharge cutoff. So you can get really tricky and fancy and make it really fun, but a lot of people, I mean, if you have a Battleborn or, you know, an average drop-in, you don't have to worry about it. But also, I'm not a Battleborn fanboy. Like, I'm sponsored by all of them, so I don't really care at this point. And if Battleborn came out with something junky, I would tell you guys so quick. So I'm, like, waiting for that, you know. So um, most of the batteries are pretty good that <laughs> are, like, safety rated. Like, the whole reason the channel even grew is because I found so much junk, you know. Like... If, if I didn't and they did their job, I would be fa failing right now. Like, I wouldn't be here. Like, dang. Thank God they're failing so much. So. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and I brought up the freezing thing because it, it's, um, I think if people need to know if they're going to be. Yeah. That. Um, yeah, so I'm going to pass it on. And uh, you're really cool. Oh, thank you. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.